Montgomery, Alabama at Common Bond Brewery. I'm Dr. P, joined by Michael King, and a very special guest. We are here with Andrew. Andrew, tell us what you do here at Common Bond Brewers. Uh, here at Common Bond Brewers, I'm the uh, co-owner and uh, head brewer. So, yep, uh, pretty much. Those are my hats that I wear. Jack of all trades. Try to, try to. When you're starting up a brewery, you got to learn how to do a little bit of everything. Well, we're really excited today to, uh, to be here with Andrew because we, we came to Montgomery this weekend and uh, started looking up uh, breweries in, in the area and uh, come across this, this, this diamond. And we want to stop in here and they were so humble and so kind to be able to talk with us. And we got to set you guys last night. And um, great beers. and. and we just insist that we had to come do an interview with him. So, sure. Thanks. So we really, really appreciate your time setting in with us. So, uh, so Andrew, tell us a little bit about more, uh, what got you into craft beers? Uh, well, I mean, initially, I mean, depends on how far we want to roll back to, you know, the real time here. <laughs> initially, when I turned 21 in college, you know, when more beer consumption starts to happen, uh, I was, you know, that weird guy that always wanted those craft beers when the beer runs out. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I was one that people were like, yeah, collect the money. I'm like, what do you want? What do you want? And I'd be like, hey, can you give me that Sam Adams or something? Man. Yeah. <laughs> of course, I got made fun of a lot. Yeah. Uh, and then when I would go on the beer runs, I would come back with something special that no one else had tried. And, of course, get made fun of. Uh, so it was just, it was always a flavor component. Like, if I'm going to be drinking beer, so it's, uh, it's good stuff. So it tastes good. Things like that. So from there, it then led to, you know, home brewing. And then, of course, that home brewing, that whole rabbit hole opened up. And I want to know why and this flavor and how to do that again, how not to do certain things again. And then yeah. it all turned into this. So it's just love of, you know, what beer can present, the flavors that are out there. And uh, I'm just crazy enough to let it keep. Take it over. She told, she told me, we actually talked about this, you're not from Montgomery. Not originally, no. No, we live here now, we almost, you know, we're eight, nine years now. Um, no, originally from Delaware. Delaware? Originally from Delaware. Wow. And for me, I don't know if you guys are familiar with a, a little place called Dogfish Head. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Uh, so I grew up right around the corner from that actual brewery. Uh, and that was normal for me. It was just something that was, you know, oh yeah, it's our local place. But when I had people coming to visit us, and they're like, oh, we have to go to that dog. I have to get that 60 minute. I have to get that 90 minute. And I'm like, you heard of this place? And then that, that sort of like civic pride. Yeah. I was like, ah, uh, yeah. Like, if we were proud that people from out of town wanted to go to Dogfish Head. Um, and that's kind of, kind of was the, the, the initial seed that wanted me to do the from Montgomery. Wow. So that was normal for me, dog fish head. Well, that's great. Like, so, you, so you didn't, you know, at that moment, you just probably never thought, hey, you know, years later, you're going to be owning your own brewery and, and get to, you know, try out your own ideas and things. Right. Um, so, uh, kind of go from there, what what gave, what made you come up with a name? Uh, so we, we tossed around a whole bunch of names. Um, and basically, my, my business partner and I, we, you know, we, we broke it down to is one, what, what brought us together as business partners? And it was beer. Mm -hmm. It was over the beer. Um, and then we thought about the city that we live in and all the, 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 the uh, incredible history that happened here and how that you know, helped form and change you know, who we are today. Uh, so we thought, what better way than what we do, which is make beer, mm -hmm. uh, to have not only the, the sociological component, what we believe beer is, a medium to bring people together to share a common bond. Yeah. I mean, we're not, the beer is not going to change the world, but people are. And if there's a way that we can bring them together with what we do, our little teeny tiny talent, uh, that's, that's where common bond can from. We want to share a common bond. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, and that's one thing we've kind of noticed over the different breweries that we've seen, the people we've talked to. Everyone, you know, the craft beer community is a very tight knit group, and everyone kind of knows each other, and you communicate, and, and uh, it's, it is, it's a, it's a common love for beer, and uh, so that's something I always felt was uh, a wonderful thing in, in the beer community. Right, uh, and I, 
once again, it's, it's just what I do. I make beer. I know there are people out there doing other things to create better things for the world. I just have to make beer and I'm trying to do my best thing to create a better world with it. And that's bring people together. So, that's kind of my, that was a, a short answer, I think. Yeah, the real thing that I kind of noticed though in this area, this is something that you guys, if you, if you ever come to uh, Montgomery, uh, Alabama, this is the only craft brewery in the area. Only and production brewery. Only production brewery. You have like... Uh, we have a brew pub that's uh, downtown as well, um, and they do well. Uh, but yeah, this is based off of a production brewery with a tasting or tap in the front. Mm -hmm. So you can taste what's made on the site. So yeah. how long have you guys been in business as far as this thing is here? We just passed two years. Just passed two years? Yeah, just passed two, two years. Two years so, yeah, we're still toddlers in this. Well, you, you, great, you make great beer. Me and, me and us each talk a lot about this, um, about some of your great beers. Um, you know, every brewery seems to have same thing that sell in and some things maybe not quite as much, but every beer that we tried last night turned out to be pretty good. Well, thanks. Uh, good. Well, the goal is to, if whoever walks through the door, we've got something, something for everyone's power. Mm -hmm. uh, which can be hard. I mean, there's so many categories of beers, BJCP, GABF styles out there. Uh, we just want to create something uh, that somebody's going to like at least one beer. Yeah. Um, and that's our goal because we, there's a lot of education, there's a lot of growth. I think not only Montgomery, but Alabama has in, in beer. So we can just make that one beer that starts someone down that uh, craft beer path. We'll take it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So speaking of that, what um, what is your what do you say that is the your most popular beer? What's the flagship or what's the man's drinking right here? Our American style blonde ale. It's uh, amazing, by the way. Gold medal winner in the state, 2019 Alabama Craft Beer Championships. Sorry. <laughs> senseless plus, senseless, senseless plus. plus. <laughs> but it's a great beer, though. It is really good. And the backstory behind that beer is, so I'm a Belgian stuff. I like Belgian Trappist uh, styles. That's just something that, that, as a craft beer consumer, love them. Love them. Uh, so a lot of my initial homebrew were based on those. So when we came up with the business plan and we were scaling everything up, uh, yeast management is an issue on the production side. Uh, and everything else that we had been making to that point were um, American style beers. So we decided to go with one yeast strain to start out. Uh, I did not want to get rid of my Belgian blonde ale or my uncle, my Potter's beer, which is typically for the monks uh, during the day. It's a lighter ABV beer, so they can have it during the day, have it during Lent, uh, and not, you know, still so go about their daily monk business. Uh, so I didn't want to get rid of that recipe, and that's what the Belgian blonde actually is up there, based on, once we got comfortable with our American ale strain. Uh, so I just adapted by changing the yeast strain to our American ale strain that we were going, and called it our blonde ale. Uh, and right now it has been sort of a gateway to a lot of those BMCers that come through our doors. So, I mean, in the state of Alabama, we're still 96, 97 percent macro drinkers. Mm -hmm. uh, so this gives a macro drinker that's looking for something, something that they're familiar with, but hopefully a little bit more flavor. Mm -hmm. We use a lot of Pilsner malt in there. We don't use any other adjuncts. Mm -hmm. Uh, so a lot of Pilsner malt with a couple other specialty uh, barleys, just to make sure you have enough flavor uh, that was based off of a Belgian style, but then added an American strain, and uh, a lot of people find it approachable on the start of their uh, Alabama craft beer journey. I agree. You know, that's one thing that we talk a lot about. Like I always seem to, uh, once we start this channel, and, and if they, we, uh, there's always someone to talk about. I said we go to breweries and, and they talk about. What, you know, kind of get your information about uh, well, how did what got us started enjoying craft beers, and uh, and a lot of people just drink Bud Light, Miller Light, you know, Coors Light, like light beers, and they don't realize that there's so much more out there. And like I said, that blonde can can easily lead you if you're used to those beers, you can try even a better beer. Just checking, like just checking out stuff like that. That's a good like transitional beer, I think. Like going from that. Something like you're not diving into an IPA, you're not going straight after a style or anything like that. It seems like that these beers can, can be a great beer for somebody to come out. So if you're just setting 
Say you want to go out on a date or, or just, you know, go out with your friends, go to a brewery and if you just want a good beer, instead of going to a bar where you're going to get like a Bud Light or Miller Light, come to a, a brewery and have a really nice set down and it's quiet right. and you can just meet great people, great friends and have a light beer and enjoy it and then kind of work your way up. Correct. And there's different ways that I and our, our, our tapping attendants take it. So say someone you know becomes a regular and they really enjoy the uh, the Blondale, we can take them to the Belgian one. Yeah. And then boom, we hit them with like, well, this is the same recipe except for the yeast. Shows you how much yeast can create a unique flavor profile. Or you know because it's lighter, we can say, hey, you know, all we've done is change a couple grains, and boom, you've got the ram still light and crisp but has a lot more flavor, but not as filling as a lot of people think a dark beer should be. Yeah. Uh, so there's different ways that once they get comfortable with us, that we can show them that what, exactly what you're saying. Craft beer can be all these different flavors without any these preconceived mm -hmm. notions of what craft beer, like a huge IPA that's bitter is going to rip the enamel off your teeth to a huge stout that's going to like be like motor oil mm -hmm. coating your esophagus. Now, I know, like, just to kind of get into that a little bit more now, I heard a story last night from your bartender that told us a little bit about a coffee, it's a coffee spout oh. that maybe your, your wife, was some kind of, there's a story here, and they said that you would be the guy to tell us something. Correct. Well, not a coffee stout, but a stout with coffee-like flavors. Oh. So, yes, our, uh, our crema stout, which is our uh, year-round uh, stout, is a milk stout or sweet stout. Uh, and we, back in the days when I was still doing this in the garage, um, my wife, not a beer drinker, full disclosure, <laughs> it's okay. Um, I, Coffee drinker, right? Oh, yes. I vowed to make a beer that she would like. And yeah, so she is a morning coffee drinker, uh, as am I. Uh, and when I stumbled upon Sweet Saddles, um, I knew that was the beer. So I had made uh, this uh, sweet stout that really kind of embodied the cappuccino with lactose uh, and roasted grains uh, to mimic that flavor, but in a beer form. And she enjoyed it. She loved it so much. Uh, when we finally became legal in the state of homebrewers, she said, up at Good People up in Birmingham, they held their first uh, Heart of Dixie Open homebrew competition, legal homebrew competition. She goes, you need to enter that beer into it. And of course, as a good husband would, listen to your wives. <laughs> I did what she said and uh, came back finalist winner. Wow. That wow. Beer. Finalist winner. And that was 2014, January 2014. And I drove back ecstatic. And that was the thing that made me go, I'm going to do this in Montgomery. Uh, so since 2014 until we opened doors in 2018. That beer was the catalyst. So she had a big hand in this. She wow. did. She did. And hey, you know, ladies, uh, that sets the bar pretty high for, for guys now. If you I mean if your if your husband or boyfriend's not making you a, 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 a coffee style, then there's a problem here. Like that's true love to make a beer specifically for you. That he's not he's not carving you a a, a, a birdhouse or anything. Like he's he's putting in something staying here. And another quick your tip. Own about the stout is, you know, a lot of people come in, we have our strawberry, we, we have our lighter beers, and a lot of people go, oh, hey, especially with the fruit ones, ah, it's a chick beer. I right, said, so it can be a chick, sure, I guess, if uh, your woman likes it, but uh, to be honest with you, my woman likes dark stout. So to me, another stigma, another thing that we can educate people is like, there's no such thing. Beers for every palate. That's there right. is something, once again, something for, for them, for anybody comes in that may like coffee to fruit. That's right. So and you guys cover a lot of ground on that. Too. Like you said the strawberry we had that last night turned out great. The uh that IDU IDA. IDA. IDA, IDA yes. IDA it's IDA like dark. India dark ale. So it is a hopped up brown ale, but I couldn't in good conscience call it IDA because the P is for pale. Mm -hmm. So if that's our India dark ale. Because uh, it's dark ale. That's been hopped up like uh, IPA would be. And it was real smooth because it was like it was darker, but it took out the bitterness of, the, it took out the bite of an IPA. 
It's very smooth. Because you got those those, those more those malts that can balance better, balance a lot more with a lot of the hops additions that you put in there. So yeah. Well you've done it well. Well I mean, like you said, uh, two years ago and just here, but you've been doing it for many years and it seems like you've got you got the ball rolling. Like you've obviously figured out uh, I, I, from what I hear, everybody says, well, you never got to figure it out. You can always try a new thing. But it seems like you're on a great path. Um, from all the breweries we've been to, uh, you're, you're, like everything is smooth. Every beer seems to have like its unique flavor. The flavors stand out. A lot of times you'll say, you know, you might have a, a coffee style. There's no coffee flavors in this style. Or, I mean, what do you think? We, we, we got something that's awful lately. It was like they said that it had some flavor in it. Coconut, there was no coconut in it. Oh yeah, that was one of the IPA cases I made. And they posted huge coconut all over it and it didn't taste anything like coconut. And if you're going to boast that your beer tastes like something, I expect it to taste like it. Right. I mean, it's not just the end of it. Say it's a normal uh, IPA. Just take it off the bottle of the can. Don't say that it has it. Uh, so, uh, so I guess, you know, we covered the beers and everything, so I guess moving forward, uh, so what are, you, what are you kind of envisioning? What are you thinking about going forward? What's kind of cooking up in your brain to kind of say, look, this is kind of, I want to try this out. What kind of new beers are you kind of thinking? What are you kind of looking for the well, future of, of Common Mind? Our, our, our initial thing is, one, we got to, you know, as, as all breweries and, and, and bars and restaurants out there, and just get through this pandemic and do our best to get to the other side for our businesses and for our customers, for you know, everyone out there. Uh, which, you know, slow stuff down and really cause us to really look at our business. Yeah. Once we get that, now we're talking about ideals. Um, yeah, uh, I can tell you right now, look for us in cans. Okay. Our idea is to get package cans, so full box cans and packs uh, out, you know, on your grocers. Uh, shelves and things like that. So some of our core beers, and then hopefully grow from there once we hone in the game. You know, at the end of uh, 2020, uh, and from there see where it takes us. Uh, I like to. Uh, I mean, our hop workshop series really allows me to play around with uh, hops and IPAs and with those type of beers. So we, I, I don't know if we're heavy on IPAs, uh, but. Find different hop combinations uh, that we're doing. Uh, in fact, our hop workshop series is my sort of mad scientist series. We're not on the board yet, but we'll be on in a couple weeks. Uh, our 004, our fourth uh, installment of the series, is a smash beer. And this is a single malt and single hop beer. Uh, so one malt, one hop, to really get an essence of what that hop flavor profile is. So, do we want to use that? Is there a way that we can use that flavor profile to, uh, uh, to allow me to experiment on people's palates with that series allows me to uh, make better choices when it comes to uh, you know, buying hops and utilizing them in our, uh, our recipes. Okay, so that's so coming down. Yeah. So besides the bad scientist beers, do you have a uh, beer that you're going to put on tap and be coming out or in your head? Talking about, or what are you kind of looking at? Uh, the yeah. Yeah. You mean a, a beer? Well, right now, what, what you're drinking with uh, our orbital bottle, mm -hmm. so our hazy IPA, uh, has been, I can tell you, it's been, been on par with our American Blonde uh, for the hop heads of like something that's real juicy. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, I know there's a lot of breweries that do hazies and hazies upon hazies upon hazies. Uh, this is our first go around that. Um, and, you know, it's, we've had a lot of good response and hopefully uh, it can continue to have good response and they can continue to learn how to batch by batch, just make it even better. That's all I'm trying to do. Every batch, just a little bit better. Learn something, get a little better. Uh, yeah, that could be one that you can start seeing in taps okay. around our distribution, which is the state of Alabama. Yeah. So from Huntsman Mobile. I'm not really a big IPA fan. It is great. That's what I'm saying. It's great. And uh, like I and I've really gotten to the point where I, I started out with IPAs and like well, I started out actually drinking stouts and porters and browns and I was like so I started getting into IPAs and at first I was like, ah, I don't know. If you're really if you're kinda of wanting to transition into IPAs, 
those like juicy or hazy IPAs seem like the way to go. Like you love grapefruit or something like that, it gives that like it, it cuts that bite out. It seems like yeah. And, uh, I think a, a why a lot of the haze craze people call it or juicy IPA why it's taken off so much is for folks that you know may like cocktails. They may like that little bit of bitters or mm -hmm. citrusy that you find in cocktails without that hoppy bite, which you know while I'm drinking our session IPA, which has a good uh, hop bitterness bite to it. They may not like that, but they like those other, like you said, those tropical, juicy flavors, and it makes it more, more potent. So I totally understand why the haze craze probably has uh, taken off. Well, I tried that session IPA too. And it turned out really good. Like, if you want a great IPA, that's that's a great one to go to. If, if you have time, backstory about how that beer. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Fire away. <laughs> so, uh, you know, once again, full disclosure, maybe I'm incriminating myself. <laughs> uh, so, me and my business partner, we like our we like our IPAs. So, we, you know, of course, when you're in the beer biz, uh, meetings happen over beers. Uh, and we were drinking our, our flagship IPA, which we, we find is one of, you know, we love our flagship. 7.7 ABV. We could have been a little bit more productive by the end of the meeting than we, <laughs> than we were. So my business partner, Logan, he goes, "Look, you have got to make a session IPA so we can continue to drink beers during you know our meetings and get stuff done. So we're not yeah. So hence I had worked on, and that's part of the hot workshop series was was developing a flavorful uh, session IPA for you know people those hot heads, but you know." After a couple are still upright standing citizens. Sounds like me and you whenever we have our names. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, let's keep it together. So, sorry, quick backstory on how the session came about. Well, no, I mean, you guys have some great beer. Um, but the big thing is, 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 you know, you guys have great product beer. And you have, a, you have a beautiful tap room. I know you guys at home can't see this, but it's a gorgeous tap room. Um, they put a lot of love into their beers. If you want to try, like, like I said, it, it goes from from blondes to IPAs to a, a coffee. Well, you say it's, not, it's a stout with coffee, coffee-like flavors. We use a lot of roasted malts in there, so and a lot of have, cool beers. In and there. they have absolutely probably the best bourbon barrel. Yeah, stout that I've man. had, and I've had a lot. I'm a man that loves my stouts. They blew me out of the water over there. So I don't say that all. But yeah, we didn't get we didn't get a beer tasting on this one, but we tried some beers last night. And the bourbon barrel, I told myself, dude, it's the best bourbon barrel I've ever had. I said it's a ten. I put it a ten, a easy ten. Well, since this guy's so, out there, watch out, Goose Island, we're coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, hey, hey, don't really come for us, Goose Island. So. <laughs> it turned out great. Though. All well, the beers have turned out great, and uh, you've been very, you know gracious to bring us in and, and let us talk with you and very such so, it was actually a very short notice so we do appreciate it hey anyone who likes craft beer i like them we're good and uh, if you're in the montgomery area or anywhere just surrounding if you're if you're just coming to town and, and like with us you know if you just come into any of the area like, hey i just want to look at the brewery to check out you need to come check these guys out because the beer is amazing people are amazing and uh, Got one hell of an honor that we'll, uh, he will tell you back stories and he will bring you in like a family. So. I, I jib and jabber too much. Don't worry about me. And uh, so he knows his beer and uh, his gator. Yeah. <laughs> oh, five. Possibly. That's right. So, guys, uh, we do appreciate you checking us out. Please hit the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. And we are Rubies and we are.